Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Strength, Yoga, and Freedom podcast. This is Justin. And here we are at another Rewind episode. As I talked about in the last episode, the theme of the month of July is all about people, relationships, doing things sometimes that we don't always want to do in those relationships. And we've been talking about doing things we don't want to do since uh, June, actually. But in this particular episode, which originally aired in February of this year, 2023, it was aired on February 16th, for that matter, of 2023, we're going to talk about five ways that we outwardly get people to be who we want them to be. And these are small things, but working on releasing them will help you feel like you let go of that grip that you hold on to when you're trying to create expected outcomes from other people. You see non-stealing, asteya, part of the yamas, the niyamas of yoga, They're all that's all part of that non-stealing. And we don't want to steal someone else's authenticity when we're talking about letting people be who they are. And so it's super important to revisit this episode. So without any further ado, I'm going to stop talking and let's jump right in. Well, in our last episode, I taught you four ways that we raise our expectations of others within ourselves that ultimately leads to us feeling disappointed, let down, and yes, even feeling betrayed. And so today what I'm going to do is teach you the five ways that we get others to try to get them to be who we want them to be. And I will tell you, a few of these are going to surprise you. So if you're new here, my name is Justin. Welcome to the Strength Yoga and Freedom Podcast. This is the podcast where we use the philosophy of yoga in a practical and everyday way, one small step at a time to become happier people. So before we get started, I just want to cover a few quick things with you. Please be sure to consider subscribing to our weekly email. We have one email per week that goes out. I give you all the information about what's coming up in future episodes of this podcast and future content on our YouTube channel. I also give you bonus coachings that you do not get here or on the YouTube channel. And this newsletter is free. I don't ask anything of you. You just sign up and you get one every Saturday it comes. So you can also, besides that, connect with me at Justin Ricky Yoga on Instagram. The link to follow me and the link to sign up for the email are both in the show notes uh, when you're in your podcast app. So take a look in those show notes. You can also donate to the podcast through listener support or buying me a coffee. That's also linked down there. I appreciate all of you who have been doing that, and I appreciate all of the continued support and growth. And speaking of support and growth, one of our loyal listeners and fans of this podcast has started a sweet treat service. That's right. It's Kenzie's Sweet Treats. She has original homemade baked goods and treats. And let me tell you something. They are absolutely fantastic. They are beautiful. They taste delicious. So if you want to get in on some of those fresh baked goodies, follow the link in the show notes because you can get 15% off your first order by mentioning this podcast or using the code Justin. SYF 15 off when you place your order with her. So all of those things are in the show notes, everyone. So now that we've covered all that, I want to get into the topic of how yoga connects to expectations within ourselves, which will translate to how we deal with others and our expectations of them. All right. And try and how we try to get them to be who we want them to be. Now, we remember from the last episode that in yoga, the practice of asteya which translates in English to non-stealing. That practice teaches us that we live with integrity and reciprocity. And I talked all about that in the last episode. So if you have not yet listened to that one, please go back and listen to that because it really acts as an anchor to this episode. We know we need to be looking at ourselves before we're looking at dealing with others. And so that's what last episode was about because this one is all about how we deal with others. We remember that we talked about integrity being defined as the quality of being honest and having strong moral principles. We also talked about how reciprocity means the practice of exchanging things for mutual benefit with others, not just one person benefiting. So I want to make something really 
clear here to all of you. The majority of us do not like being told what to do. Majority of people, including you and including me, do not like being told what to do. We like to make decisions for ourselves. We also do not like to be forced to do something or to be something we are not or that doesn't align with us. We also do not like when people get angry with us for not living up to the expectations that they may have set for us that we don't know about. I want to say that again because this is really important. The majority of us do not like being told what to do or being forced to do something or be something that does not align with us. And when that happens, we also don't like when others get angry with us for not living up to their expectations that they ever communicated with us about. Generally, most of us like being inspired to make changes. And that is where the difference comes in, everyone. This difference is the key because when you have been inspired to make a change, you are taking the information you receive and you're using it to make a course correction for whatever component of your life you are trying to course correct based upon how you see fit. So there is a huge difference between being told what to do, being told how to change, being told what to do to make changes and actually being inspired to make the change yourself. When we try hard to get someone else to do what we want them to do or be what we want them to be, we are not releasing any kind of control. We're clutching onto control and we do nothing but set ourselves up for disappointment because not only does this not work and cause resentment for maybe you or the other person, but it also doesn't work because most of the time we can't communicate any expectations even for ourselves, let alone for someone else. That's what we talked about in the last episode. So when when we're dealing with other people and we're trying to ex- set expectations for other people, we don't even know what kind of expectations we're setting for ourselves. So we need to work on that first while we're going through this healing journey. What doesn't feel good is when someone tries to steal that inspirational change that we want to make, right? That's what Asteya teaches us. It's to make sure we're not only not stealing from others because we want to control or manipulate the outcome, but we also don't want to allow ourselves to have that choice stolen from us because someone's trying to be people-pleasing or we're trying to people-please others. So with all that being said, what are the five ways that we get others to be who we want them to be. Let's get right into it. Number one, we want others to function the way we do. What do I mean by the word function? I'm going to tell you what I mean by it. This one is sort of an everyday basic way that we try to get others to be who we want them to be. And before I go on, I want to just say this. These five things that I teach you today, when I say them and you go, oh boy, I might be doing that, This is not because you are a bad person or you suck as an individual or these are mean and nasty things you're doing. You are obviously listening to this podcast because you're trying to make changes. So when you hear these five things and if you're doing some of these things or you have done some of these things, remember to give yourself grace because this is about a healing journey, not about beating yourself up. Okay, so let's get back into that with the first one I was talking about. We want others to function the way that we do. So examples of this would be those basic functional tasks that you do every day, like cooking, cleaning, emptying the dishwasher, running the vacuum, taking out the trash, making coffee, getting dressed, putting things away, whatever. Those those day-to-day kind of administrative life tasks. We tend to get irritated if people do not do these functional tasks the way we do them. Have you ever gotten irritated because someone doesn't clean the way you clean, right? And if we haven't ironed out in our own mind that we cannot expect everyone to act like we do, Because remember, if we do expect that, then we are stealing from them. And that comes back to Asteya, which teaches us about non-stealing, okay? So we cannot expect everyone to act like we do because we will get nitpicky, we will get angry, we will even get annoyed to the point where it puts us in such a shitty mood that we begin to get ultra-defensive. It's okay when people don't do the things that you do the way that you do them. Not doing these things at all, okay, not doing them at all in a relationship or a friendship or whatever, and I mean those basic functional tasks. So if we're talking about laziness, that's a whole nother problem that has nothing to do with this. I'm talking about 
someone, a relationship you have with someone else, and in that relationship, and it doesn't have to be a romantic one, but when they're going through these everyday processes, they do it different than you do it, and that's okay. Number two, we think that our social media habits should be the same as other people's social media habits. Now, are you someone who is active on social media? Or maybe you actually lay low and you're not too, too active or you go on here or there. Well, here's the thing. We have a tendency to want others to have the same social media and technology habits that we do. Now, listen, you know and I know everyone has a different relationship with social media. And I have news for you. It's going to evolve over time. An example is me. As an example, I'm going to use myself. I don't use social media in a personal way anymore. And what I mean by that is I'm not interested in showing you where I am, what I'm eating, my thoughts, nonstop thought processes. I'm not going to forward political posts. I'm not going to comment or like every single thing that I see. But I used to be the person who would put things on social media about how I was feeling or nonstop pictures of myself. So it has evolved. I know that there are others who absolutely love to do all those things I mentioned on social media. And that's okay. Remember that your habits with technology do not mean the others or the other person or others, as I just said, that you are dealing with have the same habits as you. And that also goes for texts, emails, or those other types of responses that those other things that require a response, like a text or an email. It's important to work through expectations if there's a severe problem that arises, of course. But generally, if someone likes or doesn't like social media, or they take a little longer or they're faster with their text res responses or email responses, then so be it if it's different than yours. Here is the third way that we try to get other people to be who we want them to be. And that is, we think that others should have a skill set or just be as good at something as you are. And you may be around someone who is so good at sports, that's an example, but you aren't, or vice versa. You're really good at sports and another person isn't. You might be good at math, or you might be good at writing, or communication with others, or whatever it is. You might also be good at maybe critical problem solving and other someone else might panic. I mean, you also could have where you're able to solve a problem quicker and someone else takes longer to solve a problem. You see, most of the time we get jealous or envious if someone else might be, quote, better than we are at something, or they can't perform at the same skill set we can, and then it irritates us. But in reality, it comes back to the notion of non-stealing that really teaches us to embrace the skills that others bring to the table or maybe even appreciate the lack of skills because that's what helps you bond with other human beings. You have a certain skill set that they may lack and you share your skill set with them. So that is so important as well. Number four and number five are coming up right after this short break. Okay, everybody, we're going to get back to the episode in just a quick second, but I wanted to remind you that if you are a faithful listener of the Strength, Yoga, and Freedom podcast, and you would like some free yoga classes or guided meditations, check out the Strength, Yoga, and Freedom YouTube channel. The link is in the description of the podcast episode that you are listening to right now. And in reverse, if you are listening to this, podcast on the Strength, Yoga, and Freedom YouTube channel, and you would like to access some of those free classes, check out the playlists on there. I have everything on there from gentle classes to power classes to yin classes, restorative classes, something that will fit for each and every body, right? Because that's what yoga is about, trying to fit every body. So forget if you're going to say you're not flexible, forget about worrying about what it looks like, roll out your mat or even a friggin' blanket at home, put the TV on, put your iPad, put your tablet on, put your laptop on, click on one of the videos, get out of your own way and do something that's going to feel good for yourself. Check out those free classes. I'm doing that as a service to you because yoga should be everywhere. Yoga is everywhere, but yoga should be pushed 
further out there so that everybody can experience what good it could do for your physical body. So check that out and let's get back to the episode. Welcome back, everyone. We have two more left, number four and number five, and here we go. These two might surprise you. You ready? Here's number four. This one's based around age. We sometimes think that someone may be too old or too young to do something. Yogis believe that the more you practice yoga on and off the mat, the more you reverse the aging process. And not only that, but there is a famous reel and TikTok If you've seen Judge Judy Scheinlin referencing, quote, making it. She says if you don't make it in your 20s, you can make it in your 30s. And if you don't make it in your 30s, you can make it in your 40s. And if you don't make it in your 40s, you can make it in your 50s. And she goes all the way up and says even Grandma Moses made it in her 80s when she started painting in her 80s. The thing is, is that it doesn't matter what age you are when it comes to what you're able to do. So placing an expectation on what someone else is capable of based on their age is nothing but a trap. Many people enjoy healthy and long-lasting relationships and friendships with varying age gaps. An expectation based on age can lead to missed opportunities and oftentimes you can get resentful, especially if you're thinking that you are too old to do something that someone else younger than you is doing. And that's just baloney because that's a limited belief. So, as I mentioned, yogis believe that the more you practice yoga on and off the mat, the more you reverse the aging process. That's what you're doing right now. You're listening to this podcast. You're trying to make mental changes. And so, when you do that, you start to reverse your mental aging process. So, let's talk about number five, the final one, all about mood. And that is that everyone has to be happy all the time or everyone should always be in a good mood or no one should ever be in a bad mood, okay? Since I have personally really taken a big personal journey down the road of trying to become a happier person, which is why I started this podcast, I still have days and have had days where I am off or something's going on in my life where I am in a big struggle. And when that has happened to me, I have had people say, you're always so happy all the time, so just get with it. Or they may say, Why aren't you happy today? You're always happy. You see, that's people placing an expectation on me that I will always be a happy person. Has anyone ever done that to you? Or has someone asked you why you are not in a good mood or what they can do to get your mood up? Has anyone ever asked you that? That doesn't feel good, does it? Have you ever asked anyone the same questions? Have you asked someone those very similar questions? Because I have. And you see, the practice of Asteya teaches us, again, that we are non-stealing. So when someone else is feeling what they're feeling, yes, it is okay to say something like, what is there that I could do to maybe help you right now in this, in, you know, in this mood? But it doesn't mean that you're trying to help them change their mood. You are just trying to help them cope in whatever way is necessary, And this is what I'm talking about in a general sense, that they want to feel the mood that they're in without you trying to change it. Because if you're in a bad mood and someone comes up to you and says, you need to snap out of that bad mood because you have no reason to be in a bad mood and I can do whatever I need to do to get you out of that bad mood right now. That's what doesn't feel good, right? And I'm also talking about this, as I mentioned, in general terms, because if someone is critically depressed, And that that will require different attention than this. I'm talking about general, every day, you know, you have a bad day here and there. But to expect that someone is always going to have the same mood is just a complete letdown. Moods fluctuate just like the weather fluctuates, my friends, and it's our job to embrace it and not expect it one way or the other. Just because someone is always happy doesn't mean that they're always, always 24 hours a day happy. Okay, they will have off days. And when someone is experiencing something in their life, some trauma in their life, and the mood goes up and the mood comes down, it's okay to let them feel that mood and not place an expectation on them to try to get them to change their mood. So I hope these five things, these five ways that we try to get others to be who we want them to be, Those five things, I hope that something hit you, something struck you, and maybe there's one of these that we can work on together. Maybe you can work on it, 
and maybe I can work on it. And as a community, we all start to lift the energy in this world because we certainly need some stuff like that, right? Big energy lifting instead of all the negative and the complaining and the procrastinating and the laziness that goes on out there. So until next week's episodes, I invite you to enjoy some happiness today because it's there. And when you experience it, I hope that you just really just envelop it, take it all in because you deserve it. See you next time, friends. Okay, one last thing. The content in the Strength, Yoga, and Freedom podcast is not intended as a replacement or a substitution for the advice of any medical professional, like a physician, a psychologist, or a qualified therapist, or any other medical professional. It is intended for educational and entertainment purposes only.